This is the State Theatre, Hong Kong's last surviving movie palace and a cultural icon here in the city. The theatre first opened its doors back in 1952, where it was able to seat 1,400 people. Initially, it was a concert hall offering various live performances before it transitioned more into a movie theatre. Eventually, it closed down in 1997, but now it's going to be restored back into a culture and art hub by 2026. The man behind the plan is Adrian Cheng. He runs New World Development, one of Hong Kong's biggest real estate companies. In October 2020, the company acquired full ownership of the theatre for over $600 million after steadily buying up units since 2015. But for him, this project isn't just about making money. My mission is to really connect businesses with social progress and really create shared value with society and really giving back. I would like to inculcate and also educate um, the next generation uh, in respecting heritage and culture. We're revitalizing this, we're conserving this for the next generation. And I think it's very important because this day theatre is the embodiment of the community, uh, of the Hong Kong cultural values and a lot of collective memories for Hong Kong people. When it opened, the building was considered an architectural marvel and paramount to conservation efforts is conserving this pretty unique rooftop, what they call a parabolic exoskeleton truss. This is actually a one-of-a-kind architectural um, assets wonder in the world because um, this is commonly used in building bridges and infrastructure but very rarely used in uh, commercial buildings. They use this technique to suspend and hold the entire state theatre is because they don't, do not want any uh, columns inside the theatre. So the theatre's acoustic will be at its best. That certainly helped the likes of tenor Peter Piers and composer Benjamin Britten, who were some of the big international artists to perform here back in the day. In 2017, the theatre was listed as a Grade 1 historic building. And before the conservation work begins, Cheng showed us a sneak peek inside, starting with the dress circle, the theatre's VIP area. At that time, you know, one ticket is around three and a half dollars. Uh, a normal ticket is around uh, one and a half dollars. So we give you some uh, reference, you know, in wonton noodles in the 50s, it's only 50 cents. So the one ticket in the dress circle is seven times of a wonton noodle. Hong Kong has had little success when it comes to heritage conservation. So talk of demolishing the theater has been building up for some time and preserving the past is a top priority for Cheng. You see this hand railing? It's a metal, right? Yeah. This is brand, it is new. Um, the old fabric is actually wood. This is a, a conservation joint because what happens is um, people are able to see what is the original fabrics and materials. So for our conservation studies, that will help us a lot to understand what was uh, the original um, image in the 50s of the hand rail. And now, a blast from the past. Cheng set up an exhibition showcasing the collective memories of the theatre, from hand-drawn movie posters to the old ticket stubs. The theatre once had a 56-foot cinema screen and played an instrumental role in Hong Kong's booming movie industry. In the 70s and 80s, the Asian movie capital produced over 300 films a year. And fun fact, this theatre was actually featured in the 1978 film Game of Death starring the legendary Bruce Lee. You know, state theatre, as everyone knows, is about performance art, about film, about movies. But actually music, pop music, canto pop music, was very popular here. And the reason why is because there were a few shops here that were selling a lot of uh, those canto pop records in the 80s and cassette tapes too. And that's why we also did an exhibition um, to pay respect and pay tribute to uh, the canto pop music. This is also part of uh, what we're promoting, uh, kind of a, we call it the artisanal movement, where we're all artisans, where we're trying to uh, create the best for uh, our generation. This is a hairdresser with a very long history. It looks like it was on the street, right? It's a street shop front types of hairdresser, but it's inside a shopping arcade. People go to watch movies and people go uh, watch a play or a musical, and they will do their hair before going into um, watching the performance, it was treated as a very big event. 
And I saw outside they even had places where you can shine your shoes, and it really was like an actually going out. It was out like an Oscar event. event. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the show must go on. Adrian Cheng says the ultimate goal is to restore the theatre's original glamour and build what he calls a cultural oasis for the next generation. I think art and culture has evolved and, and it has to be relevant to the millennials and also uh, to, the, to the current times. So if you look at performance uh, uh, theatre, uh, there's, there's different fields. There, I think there will be much more, maybe there will be VR, there will be AR, there will be different ways to actually perform and manifest. So what we want to create is a very much more versatile theatre. We will create something a little bit more out of the box. I will expose to it, to you, in 2026. <laughs> Brilliant. Yes.